All right, so let's get started today. We're continuing again on the excellencies of God. This is week six, I believe. That's, that was my count, so we'll, we'll go with week six. And we're going through the attribute of goodness. Um, so could I get somebody to pray for us as we start this class? I would. Amen. So again, to keep in mind, just as a reminder of all this past five weeks, as we have been, uh, been learning, again, each one of the attributes that we have been uh, talking about, or excellencies, it's 100% who God is. I mean, that might sound repetitive, but I just want you to keep that in mind. As we talk about the attribute of goodness today, uh, remember that each one of them is 100% who He is. And again, He's also a simple God to the point that He can be understood and can be, uh, you can know who he is and you can know uh, what he does and like even the different attributes and stuff. So again, the attribute of goodness is considered a communicable uh, attribute. This means that goodness, uh, in a sense, in part, is shared with us. So God, uh, the attribute of goodness from God is shared with us. And that's why, again, one of the um, descriptions of this uh, attributes uh, it's a communicable attribute. Again, people can be good. People can do good things uh, like God like God is. So, But what is goodness? What do you guys think goodness is? I don't know. Any, any stabs of what goodness is? The opposite of badness. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Very good. That's a good start, though. That's, that's a good start. I mean, it is the opposite of badness, so... Anything else? He wraps around both morality and quality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He is good in both ways. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. It, it, it can cover such a wide range of things between something that tastes good, something that is good, someone that's mm-hmm. good to someone else. Yeah. It's, it's a, a very broad term. Yeah. So if goodness is a communicable attribute, which means that We share it with God. We share it in part with God, this attribute. What does goodness mean in a human sense? Like, how do you see goodness in, like, in humans, in a sense? How do you see that, like, even around you? Like, what do you see as goodness? Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to show you a video. We're not going to watch the whole thing. Is it good? Maybe. I don't know. (laughs) Don't tell me if it's not. (laughs) Okay. So maybe you have seen several of this. Maybe you've been caught in some, like, YouTube, like, algorithm, like, that tells you, like, shows you, like, 10 or 20 videos of, like, they look like this. But... This is what the world looks. ...shows maturity after a teenage thief steals all the candy. A perceptive good Samaritan pops out of his car to shut a fellow driver's hood. their teary-eyed teacher with a new pair of kicks after his were stolen. (laughs) This band teacher isn't going to let a silly sprinkler ruin his student's special day. shifts a huge rock to release a fox that's stuck between boulders. A generous woman pays for this old lady's groceries and makes her very emotional. cancer survivor is brought to tears when a flight crew congratulates her on a well-fought battle. 
All right, so that will be it for today. Uh, again, there's thousands of videos like that on YouTube. People, I mean, Google probably thinks I'm like depressed or anything like that after finding, like searching for all these videos and stuff like that. But again, there's a lot of videos that we can see, a lot of videos that we can find about just random acts of kindness, random uh, acts of goodness in a sense that people do or even we find them, we see them to uh, even to cheer us up, maybe to like find or even like I heard so, uh, several of you like awing a, a few of them and like awing what they were doing is like, okay, like what they were doing is good. What they were, uh, again, humans can't do good. Uh, a human is able to do that because of God uh, has given the ability to do that. But Mark ten eighteen says, no one is good except God alone. So then we find a controversy. We see that there is a lot of goodness in this world. There is a lot of goodness. That maybe you can think of things that you have done of good things. Maybe you have shared something with somebody or maybe you have uh, sacrificed something for your kids, for your family or for anything um, in, in a worldly sense, even in a godly, like in a Bible sense, we can see those things as good. We can classify those acts of goodness as act of, of goodness. But then uh, Mark 10, again, this is Jesus speaking. It says, no one is good. And he's speaking to the uh, young ruler. He's saying, well, the young ruler calls him good teacher. But then we, uh, in Mark, it's a little more aggressive in a sense, the, how Mark uh, tells about the response of Jesus. Jesus basically tells him, no one is good but God. But what he's saying is not like that God, that Jesus is not good. He's not undermining his authority or his goodness. What he's saying is that God is the ultimate standard of goodness. He is the ultimate standard for what goodness is and what goodness means in our, in our world. So we're going to look through some definitions or descriptions that people have, have uh, given us in the, uh, even through books and stuff like that. So MacArthur and Mayhew said, God's, God's goodness is that he is the perfect sum, source, and st standard for himself and his creatures of that which is wholesome, virtuous, beneficial, and beautiful. So again, this is not only this, he's not only the standard for himself, he's not only, uh, he like, he's the level, basically he's the, what goodness means is what God is, but not only for him, for himself, but also for his creatures, for us. Again, he is the standard of goodness, not only, uh, it says the perfect sum, source, and standard of goodness, of that which is wholesome, virtuous, beneficial, and beautiful. Uh, Wayne Grudem said the goodness of God means that God is the uh, final standard of good, and that God, and all that God is and does is worthy of approval. Then Ryrie said words like goodness, mercy, Long-suffering and grace are closely related to love. Although distinctions are made, they are not exact. Goodness may be defined as God's benevolent concern for His creatures. So again, some of this might be more of a definition. Some of this might be more of a description of what goodness is. But again, as we see what goodness is, as we see what is, this, what is God's goodness, how is God good or how does, is God made good in a sense? But again, we see that he is the standard. He is the one that is good in himself. He does good in himself and he does it towards his creatures, uh, towards us. And again, this is an attribute that is also shared with us in part, not completely, not again, not in the same way that God, uh, God, is, that God is good. But again, we see that goodness is shared with us. We are able to see in the world, even in unbelievers, things that the creatures, uh, humans can do good and, and can be good to others or even to even themselves, if you can think about that way. But again, that is because God has given us the ability to be good. And not only that, but he's also the standard. So we're going to look at some verses like we did last time. And we're going to see from the beginning, I'm going to read, uh, can I get somebody to read Psalms 34, verse 8? Psalms 34, verse 8. Can I get somebody else to read Psalm uh, 52, verse 1? Yeah. 
And then uh, Jeremiah 31, 14. Connor, there you go. All right, so uh, Genesis 1, 31 says, God saw all that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. So again, from the day of creation, what he made from the beginning, what he was making, again, all the things that he did, every, after, well, sorry, after every day, he called it good. But at the end of the sixth day, he called it very good. So not only what, who he is, not only what, uh, how he interacts with people is good, but also what he does is good. Even to the point, like from the beginning, from the point of creation, everything that God does, everything that God says, everything that God is doing, again, is good. And again, he even calls what he did in creation after the six days, after all, he, all the things he created, he calls everything good. Um, can we read Psalm 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. So again, God, God's goodness is not only just something that he has or something that it's like we are never able to experience that. This verse says, oh, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. So again, God's goodness is accessible. We're able to receive the goodness. We're able to experience His goodness through, again, thinking about just the simplest and biggest gift, uh, the gift of salvation. God's goodness is revealed, and God's goodness is able to be experienced uh, through that. So again, God's goodness is accessible to everybody. God's goodness is accessible even through creation. We are able to enjoy. We're able to see. We're able to uh, smell and different things like that. That we, again, through His goodness, through Him make, like creating things and calling it good, then we're able to experience that. We're able to live in this world that He has created. And again, that means that God's goodness is accessible. Um, Psalm 52, verse 1. Again, why do you boast in evil, you uh, almighty man? The loving kindness, or in other translations, is goodness, or it can be translated in the same way as goodness, of God endures all day long. So again, God's goodness doesn't expire. God's goodness doesn't go this far. It goes forever. Again, it doesn't, doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter how long it will take, in a sense, or if you can... If you're thinking about an example, maybe, maybe you're somebody that you have been praying. Maybe you're somebody that you have been reaching out to them and reaching out to them about the gospel and sharing with them. Uh, like it, you, I've shared several times about my sister, uh, that she's not a believer. And even thinking that God's goodness is not enough to save her. Or even thinking about that God's goodness has it ran out for her in a sense. That is not what the Bible tells us. Again, God's goodness endures forever. If we boast in evil, almighty man, like it says, the loving kindness of God endures all day long. Uh, did I give somebody Psalm 145, verse 9? No? I did that one. Okay. So the one, uh, Psalm 145, verse 9 says, The Lord is good to all, and His mercies are over all His works. So God's goodness doesn't discriminate. There's nothing that doesn't receive God's goodness. There is nothing in this world, there's none of us that are receiving even a, like a lesser amount than another one is of God's goodness. There is nothing, everything that we see, everything, again, every single one of us and every single action that he does, every single thing that he, uh, uh, that he can, just through his revelation in the scriptures, everything that he does, everything that he interacts with is good. And again, it doesn't discriminate who you are, who it, what it is, anything. Again, everybody, every single one is getting the same amount, in a sense, of goodness. Because, again, he's not only 100% good in comparison to all the other attributes, but he's 100% good in everything he does. Uh, Jeremiah 31, 14. God's goodness satisfies. It's not something that 
it's something that sometimes or even in our everyday life we forget about because God is good in everything and he has always been good in everything. We take it for granted. We have not been able to experience anything else because that's not what, who God is. We have not been able to experience a bad God. We have not been able to experience, it will not be able to experience ever, something bad from God. So then we take for granted what, what good, what, uh, the good things that God does. In our everyday life, even through our whole life, you can think back of good things or even things that you have experienced or seen other people experience that represent God's goodness. And again, we, I trust that you can't think of anything that God has done that was bad because that's not who God is. But then again, God's goodness satisfies. We're able to be satisfied by God's, by God's goodness. But again, we have to be careful not to take it for granted. It is something that we have not experienced anything else, anything different than that. But again, that is something that we need to uh, keep in mind every day, that God is good and that God will be good all the time. Let's read some uh, other passages. Um, can I get somebody to read Nahum 1.7? Uh, sorry, Nahum 1.7. Can somebody read that for me? Yeah. And then Matthew 19.17. Anybody? No. And then 1 John 1.5. Anybody? Yeah. All right, so Nahum 1.7. So God's goodness brings safety. We are able to be safe. We're able to uh, rely on God's goodness and understand and trust that, again, nothing else besides good things are going to happen. Nothing but good comes out of God. Nothing but good is what God exp like gives to us, in a sense. So in God's goodness, we can uh, obtain and we can be safe. From again, even as we were looking at the fear of the Lord, we in God's goodness by fearing God, we will drive away any other fear. We can be safe from any other fear that this world fears, and that we are uh, tempted to fear as well. Through God's goodness, through understanding and fearing uh, God, and through understanding God's goodness, we can receive and uh, receive safety again. And have safety in that in that sense. Matthew seven eleven says, "If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your child, children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask Him?" So here is bas he's basically just well, this is Jesus speaking. He's making a, in a sense a silly comparison. It's like any of, of you who is uh, a father or a mother or even just a sibling or a brother or anything like that has been able to give a gift, even like we just, well, it was like two months ago, well, like a month ago, whatever, that we had Christmas. Maybe some of you practice like you give one gift to every single member of your family or maybe you like draw names or something like that, but you're able to give a good gift. You're able to buy something and maybe think about something that the other person would like, something that this person doesn't have or something that this person maybe like is something that they're interested in, but they're not wanting to spend the money in, whatever it is. You're able to be, give good gifts. You're able to, uh, maybe if you want to, I mean, <laughs> you can also give a get bad gift if you want to too. <laughs> but again, we're able to give a good gift. So here Jesus is comparing our ability, our opportunity, and again, ability, there's nothing else, uh, to do good things, to give good things in a sense. And he's comparing it to God and says, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask him? So again, he's referring to us asking him, but again, how much more does God, how much more can God do good things if we are even able, if we are sinful people, can do and give good things. We can do good things to other people. We can give good things to other people. Even as sinful people, we can do that. 
But then we have our holy and infinite and all-powerful God that, again, we are created in His image. We're created in His image, and that's where we're able to do good and to give good things. And again, He is also at the same way. And because we are good, He is infinitely good. He is 100% good, again, in everything that He does. Um, sorry, I think I'm in Matthew 19, 17. So this is the peril passage from Mark ten eighteen, where the uh, young ruler comes to Jesus and says, hey, I've done all these things. I keep the commandments. Um, so good, like he calls him good teacher again. Uh, what, do I need to, what do I need to do to inherit the kingdom of God? Um, so again, it says, and he said to him, why are you asking me what is good? There is only one who is good. But if you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. So again, there's only one that is good. There's nothing else. We are able to be good. We're able to do good things. We're able to uh, give good things in a sense, but not infinitely, not in the same way that God can and not in everything like God can. So again, God's goodness is a standard. And again, Matthew 19, 17 is a parallel passage to Mark 10, 18. Matthew has a more subtle way or even... Uh, yeah, a more subtle way to say, to say the same thing, just because some people believe that from Mark 10, 18, Jesus is basically saying, I'm not good. And that's not the point uh, that Jesus is making. Again, Matthew kind of fixes some of, the, <laughs> some of, those, some of those things. Um, James 1, 17 says, Every good thing given in every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation, or shift in shadow. So again, God's goodness is the source. God's goodness is uh, is the source of what uh, what we is the source of our goodness because He is good, and because this is a communicable attribute, we are able to do good. Like we saw in the video, there's that little girl that somebody steals all the candy, and then she goes and is like, "Oh, somebody needs some more. Somebody needs somebody else is going to come, and there's not going to be candy here." So I need to give some of it. Or even the person that saw the hood that was not closed and gets out of the car and like uh, closes the hood and is like, and the person's like, oh, thank you. It's like, oh, I didn't even think I needed that or things like that. Or even other things that we saw. We are able to be good and we're not able to be good because we are good in ourselves. We're able to be good because God has given us the ability to do that. Because through his, this attributes, through him being the standard of goodness, the standard of what good is and what doing good to other people is as, at the same time, we are able to be good through him sharing this, uh, this attribute with us. Uh, 1 John 1, 5. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So again, God's goodness in his nature. God is good in who he is. Again, like uh, I think it was the definition from MacArthur that said that it's not, he's not only the standard for us, he's not only the standard for his creatures, but he's also the standard for himself. In his nature, there's goodness. In his nature, everything is good. And the, uh, again, that God is light, that God, uh, God is light, and in him there's no darkness at all. Again, the word, the word goodness is not here in this in this verse, but we can understand that the only thing that there is in God is light. There is no darkness. There is nothing that is bad. You can even uh, change this word. It says that, it, uh, that God is good, and in Him there is no badness at all. We can exchange those words in a sense to understand what, is, what the message of, of this uh, verse is, is, that God is, there is nothing in God. Again, there is nothing in His nature. That is not good. Do you guys, uh, this is not, again, this is not an extent list of all the verses that talk about goodness, but do you guys think about any other verse that speaks or even that you can remember or you can remind yourself even uh, as you need like a goodness boost or something like that? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely horrible if you know the farmer 
flowers can't plant because it stayed winter all year. You know? <laughs> and um, he causes the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. Hmm. And at one point, I always thought that that was kind of like, you know, he makes bad things happen to good and bad people. But it's not. It's, you know, without rain, we, we die, too, hmm. from famine. You know, and those... Things that happen are anomalies, you know, like winter stays too long or, or we get way too much rain and um, and then we hmm. complain. But even those things are good because then we can appreciate hmm. more what he does on a daily basis. The hmm. oxygen that we breathe is always <laughs> just the right level. Even in polluted areas, you can survive. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. I've... Uh, Psalm 119, 68. Hmm. Uh, it says, God is good, and He does good. Hmm. Just a simple declaration of who He is. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. I learn from the contrast a lot. So I think of Romans 3. You know, just there's none who does good, no, not one. Hmm. And so I look at that and I go... Oh, <laughs> that's me, so that pushes me to the alternative yeah. of the nature of God. You know, to reflect upon that tends to provoke a pursuit of Him yeah. in a way that few other things do. Yeah. You know? And maybe it's not a verse that you use as, and like, as a help or as a reminder of God's goodness or things like that. Is there any other thing that you use or is there any other thing that encourages you or reminds you of God's goodness? When we're struggling, it says he is good. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble. The Lord is good and a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in him. Hmm. So in the difficult times, he's good. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. I'm reading a book on the concept of Christianity within the arts. And it's, it's been really interesting to see this guy's take on the fact that all talent, anything that's good, anything that's ever done that's good has come from God. Mm. Um, even through you know, people that are unsafe, people that are living awful lives, God gave them that talent. Mm. It, 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 it was kind of interesting to think of it as a almost like it's just this, this resource that God has doled out kind of indiscriminately to some mm -hmm. extent. And uh, we can, even within people's work that are not believers, we can look at that and say, you know what, God gave them that ability to mm -hmm. do that. And if you ask them, you know, how did you, how are you able to draw like that? How are you able to paint like that? And you get past the arrogance and you say, okay, well, I mean, I know you practiced a lot, but yeah. what made you able to make that line in, in, in that shape that, 75 other people in the same room <laughs> could possibly even do. And it's because God gave them that ability. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad you're not... Oh, sorry, Tax. I think in, in the context of simplicity, I think there's hmm. a, a challenge to this when we are going through hard times. You know, we understand that God is perfectly good all the time. We also know that He's perfectly and so hmm. when you put those things together and you encounter hardships of life of any kind, kind of that tension, like how do these things work hmm. together? Yeah. How, how is God still good when I'm struggling with this disease or when things keep breaking in the house that are expensive to repair? All of these different things. Hmm. Joseph's able to say that his brothers meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Mm. And then the same thing, sort of, in Romans 8, where, you know, that all things work together for good. And we 
know that these things are true, but that has to be within the context of God's goodness being what brings about the most glory for himself. Yeah. And so it's just kind of the tension there sometimes that we, we feel, but we understand and we know that mm. the tension's not actually there, but just that rubs sometimes in our own understanding of yeah. goodness in comparison to his sovereignty. You know? Yeah. Even just while we, I, I don't remember who shared it, but it's like when we pray for rain or like farmers pray, pray for rain and then they get too much rain and it's like, come on, I just needed this amount. Like if you're not, if you're less than that, if you're more than that, it's like you're not good. And it's like, it's completely the opposite. It's like in everything that he does and everything that he, and in what way he does it, he is good. Again, through hard, hard times, through even good times that, we're not as you expected it. Sometimes we think of like things that we have asked God and we have this need or we have this request and God fulfills that need in a completely different way than we thought. And again, we start to crumble and we start to get upset and saying, hey, I, 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 I'm thankful. <laughs> We're thankful that God fulfilled this need, but we are kind of upset that God didn't fulfill it the right way or the way that we wanted. And it's like, okay, <laughs> God is still good. God is still good through those times when he doesn't fulfill the things that, uh, that we needed in the way that we wanted. God is still good, again. Um, anything else? Yeah. I just thought of Job's response mm -hmm. to the tragedy in his life. His wife told him to curse God and die, and he said that she was foolish because he said, Shall we indeed accept good from God and not accept adversity? Hmm. He recognized God's sovereign goodness that even though he took everything away from him, he hmm. still said God is good. Hmm. He's in control of all the good and bad that happens. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really thankful you guys are not searching for YouTube videos or stuff like that to <laughs> to help you with your goodness. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> but uh again, Galatians six 9 through 10 says, let, let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap, reap if we do not grow weary. So then while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, and especially to those who are in the household of the faith. So again, God is not only good. God has not only given us the ability to do good. But sometimes we can relate to this verse, that we grow weary of doing good. We grow tired of doing good. And we even, in another sense, we grow tired of, of understanding or we grow tired of reminding ourselves of God's goodness. Again, the verse says, let us not grow weary of doing good. Let us keep doing good. Let us, again, let us, let, rem let us remind ourselves of God's goodness. And let us also, that also help us to understand that we have the ability to do good, that we have the opportunity to do good, even though it's tiring, even though it gets hard sometimes. But again, and even like at the end of the verse, it says, and especially to those who are in the house of the faith. So again, no, not only growing weary of doing good happens to all the people, even just to somebody that you're sharing the gospel, let's say, or have been sharing the gospel for a while. Or even people at the church here, people that maybe you don't really relate that much, or maybe it's hard for you to do good things towards them or it's hard for you to be good towards them. And again, as we remind ourselves of God's goodness, as we remind ourselves of who God is, then that should push us and that should encourage us to do good as well. Um, so again, the good God calls believers to be good like He is. Because we're Im image bearers, we're able to practice goodness, and God has given us the tools and strength to be more like Him in this way. So as we recognize God's goodness in our daily life, as we remind ourselves even of God's goodness, we recognize God's goodness daily in creation. Again, from the moment of creation, he called it good. What he did in creation, he called good. We recognize God's goodness daily in people and answer prayers in his word. Again, through his revelation, he revealed himself through his word in his perfect word, even though it was communicated in human language. Again, it is perfect and it communicates His goodness. 
and his blessings and his provisions. Again, we can think of daily things, having food on our, in your table, having a roof over your head, things like that, that if it wasn't for God, if it wasn't even, even like the abilities that uh, we were talking, the skills in art and other things in music and things like that, if it wasn't for God, if it wasn't for God's goodness towards you, we would not be able to do those things. In your breath, again, being able to wake up every day and being able to live another day, it's just because of God's goodness. Well, let me say that again. It's not just because of God's goodness. It's because of all of the attributes of God combined into one thing. <laughs> so in His forgiveness, in, his, in acts of kindness, and again, like everyone's saying, in our salvation. God, God's goodness is revealed and God's goodness is expressed towards us in Him giving salvation to us. He didn't have to. He didn't need to. But God did. God wanted us to have a way to have a relationship with Him when we failed. And again, that's another expression of His goodness and another thing that we can trust, another thing that we can remind ourselves of every day. But again, like I was saying at the beginning, as we have not been given the ability to experience a bad God, and we will never have that opportunity to experience a bad God, uh, it's easy for us to forget. It's easy for us to take for granted the good God that we have because we haven't experienced anything else. It's easy for, for us to do that. And I pray even just through... Uh, me studying for this class, I realized that there were several times that I was taking God's goodness for granted because I had never experienced anything else. Everything that I can think of and everything that will happen in a sense, I can trust that will be good. Like anything from God will be good. And I can trust that, but I shouldn't grow, uh, grow like, I shouldn't forget that. And I pray that that's the same, uh, the same for you. Do you guys have any more comments or questions or any other? Yeah. Um, in our eyes, there's lots of things that he does that we don't understand mm. that we have to just by faith say he's good, mm. you know? And um, someone I'm related to that is not here has <laughs> <laughs> said, um, How can it be good that God would um, so cruelly and unjustly punish his own perfect son um, for any reason, you know, that was so unjust. And even to Jesus, he was being good in his um, future plans for that couldn't have, Jesus wouldn't have been fully perfected until he did that. Hmm. And um, it was like his great love, too, reflecting God. And, you know, I'm sure that wasn't one of God's favorite things to do. Hmm. It was a sacrifice yeah. for us. And he didn't make us accept it. He's letting us choose, which in itself um, is a blessing, so we can appreciate him so much more. And um, but it's weird because if you just look at it, it's like how can we be good to let such awful things hmm. happen? And um, but he's got such a bigger scope of plans and such you know, bigger everything hmm. that he's trustworthy. Hmm. And um, we just have to sometimes bear pain, hmm. you know, yep. and go, he is good. And I will trust that because it's true. Hmm. Yeah. Um, there's a song that pops up on my Spotify playlist. I think it's called God is Here, God is Still Here. And basically, it, it relates to this and also what Gary was talking about this morning. It kind of goes through all her fears, like all the what ifs, and she kind of like ends it with like, even if all those things happen, God is still good, 
Anybody else? Well, I'm, <clears throat> sorry. I'm often reminded of God's goodness as a garden um, because it is good that he cursed the ground because of our sin, which sounds ridiculous, but it is. Um, because even like, it's hard to think about it now, but in the middle of July when it's 100 degrees and I'm sweating as I'm <laughs> weeding, you know, and it's miserable as I've got to sweat drenching every part of me, right? And it's just going out of the ground and reminded that. It is good that God cursed the ground so that I have to rely on Him for everything. That I can't say, I grew this by my own might, but I can say because of God's goodness, I am still able to have sustenance despite the curse. So just being reminded of that, that I can rejoice in His goodness despite the things that are wrong. Yeah. Nobody else has a comment. I'll close this in prayer. So thanks again for listening. Thanks again for being here. So um, let's pray. Father God, we're thankful. We are amazed by your goodness. We are in awe that you have never been anything but good. God, thank you for that reminder. Help us, God, to remind ourselves of that every day. It's easy for us to forget that. It's easy for us to take that for granted because we have never seen anything else. God, I pray that you help us to see uh, our goodness daily, to recognize our goodness in creation and your faithfulness and, again, having the ability and the opportunity to live another day and even in our salvation, God. Thank you for being good to us in Thank you for being nothing else but good. God, I pray that you help us to remind this, ourselves of this. And God is even things we don't understand things or even things are not what we expect. Help us to trust and help us to keep our trust in understanding that you're good. No matter what the situation, no matter what hardship there is in, in our lives, God, we need to trust that you're good. Help us to do that. God, I pray that you help us to um, have a good rest of the day. Help us to honor and glorify you with what we do and say. Lord Jesus' name, amen.